when I was in college and I was taking courses, I would always use my semester breaks to try to prepare for the next semester. And this is something that a lot of math majors do. You know, if they're taking advanced calculus next semester, they'll pick up a book on advanced calculus and try to self-study. Maybe they'll watch videos on the internet. And really any exposure you get to the material prior to taking the class is good. But there's a really good way to do it and there's an okay way to do it. For example, this is a book on modern college algebra and trigonometry. So you might be thinking, hey, if I'm going to be taking college algebra or algebra at some point or maybe trig, should I buy this book and will it help me? The answer is yes, but this book is not your best option, right? This is not the best thing to do. The truth is that the answer, at least in my experience, is really kind of unfortunate because it's kind of boring. The best way to prepare for any college level class, doesn't matter what it is, this is just my personal experience, any college level class is to get the book for that class, okay? Get the book for that class and learn from that book because that's actually what you're going to see. This book is very, very different from, let's say, you know, Algebra and Trigonometry by uh, Hornsby uh, and, and Lyle. That's a newer uh, Algebra and Trig book, whereas this is an older one. So uh, the content is, is different. Uh, the examples are different. It just has a different flavor. Now, that's not to say this is a bad book. This is an awesome book, and I'll show you this book a little bit later in the video. I think it's a great book. But if you're trying to prepare for an actual class in college or high school, by far, and I, I know it's not the best answer, but the best way is to get the book for that class because that's the material that you're going to be seeing in the class. Also, also super, super important, something else you should do is go on Google and like Google the teacher's name, Google the class. See if you can find an old syllabus so you know what sections are being covered. And it just makes such a huge difference to do that. And it's not the best answer because I would rather, I'd rather sit down and you know work through a book like this Oh, oh, I can smell it from here. I just got to give it a whiff here. This is awesome. Oh, it smells so good. It has a really unusual smell. It's probably not good for me, but I, I, I gave it a whiff anyways. So this is probably not, let me come back into focus here, probably not the best, not the best solution, right? Not the best solution, but a good one. So, you know, if you prefer to read old books, if that's what, if that's what gets you to study, it's great. But the best way is to get the book for the actual class, whatever class you're taking. Usually that information is available. In fact, a lot of the books I have, I have uh, Advanced Calculus by Taylor and Mann. That book, I bought it because I was trying to prepare for Advanced Calculus. I bought it like three months before um, the, the semester started and they changed the book. So I got stuck with the book. It was pretty expensive too. Um, it's a pretty good book, but you know, <laughs> so I was trying to do that. And it is the best way, but yeah, that's my answer. And hopefully if you are taking a class, I think it's the best advice you can follow because you can read a ton of books, you can watch a ton of videos, but nothing like the book you're actually going to be using is going to help you more. I mean, if you're working through that book and you do examples and they show up on a test, you're already ahead. You got that question correct. So it is absolutely the best, the best way to do it. So this book is really old. Wow, 1964, 65, 66, 68. And let's look at the contents. Properties of real numbers, algebraic expressions, equations and inequalities in one variable and relations and functions. By the way, I, I don't know if this book is easy to get. Um, I'm pretty sure it's out of print, so I, I'll try to find it and leave info in the description, but pretty sure it's kind of hard to find. Polynomial and rational functions, exponential and logarithmic functions, circular functions. Now we get to some trig trigonometric functions, inverse functions, and conditional equations. Even has some matrices and determinants, linear systems, some complex numbers, sequences in series, and probabilities. So this is a book, its topics are at least very, very similar to the topics in a modern book on algebra and trig. This book, uh, or at least a modern one, would be used for courses such as pre-calculus or trigonometry in a college setting. Now, if you're just doing self-study for the sake of self-study, I think all books are great. New books, old books. This book is interesting because of the exercises. Here's, an ex here's a look at some of the exercises in 2.1. And notice it says exercise 2.1. And then it gives you uh, 
an example, right? And then you have the exercises, and then he gives you another example, and then you have the exercises, and then he gives you an, uh, an example, and then you have the exercises. So it gives you examples, solutions, and exercises. It doesn't always do that in all the sections. It's pretty random, I've noticed, from what I've seen. Um, but it does it quite a bit. It's doing it here again, but it doesn't do it in every section. In some sections, um, there's, less, there's less examples in the exercises. For example, <laughs> so, exercise 4.1, it just says determine the Cartesian product. And per perhaps that's because the author felt that he already did an example in the section, so it doesn't need to be indicated. It's almost as if the authors... They said, hey, we didn't really do examples of this type in the section. So let's throw in an example at the end in the exercises just to add clarity in the book, which is wonderful. If you, know, if you pick up a book, uh, for example, I'll use Stewart's Calculus book, which is a great book. I recommend it. And you, know, you work through the examples, and then you get to the exercises. You're going to see problems there that you've never seen before. You're going to say, hey, how in the world do I do that? And then you go back, you, know, you, you go back through the book, and, and you don't see any examples like that. So what do you do? You get stuck, you go on the internet, you Google, you Google, you use videos, you know, you do anything you can, try to check your answer or get help even just getting started on, on questions that you, do, you don't know how to do. This book also has proofs. Look at this, show that. And it actually has solutions to the proofs in the back of the book, which is super, super rare. Um, for example, this is 3.5, so let me show you. And it appears, so far from my experience with this book, that odd answers are given in the back of the book. Let's check it out, 3.5. Really fun, I love these old books. I love these old books, look at that. So you see there's like little mini proofs there and stuff. Really nice. There it is, there we go. Those are the absolute value proofs. So they show you, they show you the steps. The proofs are okay. Um, it's always better. I mean, they're correct. It's always better if you write your own proof. That's always a better proof. Look at all the work they show you. Look at that. I mean, they don't mess around. So I feel like the authors took a lot of extra time to to show all the steps and show all the work, which is, you know, you don't see this in newer books, right? You don't see stuff like this. Also, you don't see like random examples thrown into the exercises. Here you see there's there's no exercises, no examples here. But in a lot of the sections, you know, we'll get those random examples like I was showing you earlier. Here in 9.1, we have it. So we have some. And then same over here, you see example, solution, example, solution. It's a weird format. It's a weird format. Again, it's almost as if the authors were like, hey, we didn't do enough examples of this throughout the text. Let's just throw in some extra examples in the exercises. Uh, for the students. Also, that also means you don't have to go search for them. Like, oh, how do I do that? Then you got to go search for it. It's right there, right with the exercises. So it's a very, very interesting layout uh, in this book. Yeah, random book. I just got to give it one more smell. It smells so good. I can smell it when I turn the pages. Oh, it's an absolutely incredible book. Incredible, incredible. But this is not the best book for you if you are trying to prepare for a class in college algebra or in trig, right? That's the point of this video. And I, I think that's an unpopular opinion because I would rather use this book. I would rather use an old book and, and study from that book in order to prepare for a class. You could make the argument that by using an old book like this, you're exposed to different math. And then so when you take the course, you're seeing it from a different perspective. So you're getting two different perspectives. So you could make that argument and you could argue that and you could say that I'm wrong and old books are better. <laughs> so I don't know, right? There's all kinds of ways uh, to think about things. That's the, things, that's the thing about, you know, human thought and, and logic. Um, there's, there's different ways to, to rationalize things. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think using the book for the class is the most effective way to prepare for a class? Or do you, or do you think it's better to use old books so that you get a different perspective? And then when you take the class, you, you use the new book and you're getting a second viewpoint of the material, which kind of reinforces that. Um, I, I, I still think, you know, because time is an issue and we only have so much time in a day, I think it's better to get the book for the class and at least work on that primarily and then maybe use these old books. But I don't know. That was more effective for me. I found better results whenever I used the book for the class uh, versus times when I used other books 
prepare. It was always the books for the class that helped me the most because those are the books that I did homework from. Those are the books that oftentimes test questions came from. And so, yeah, just my experience. Again, not not the best answer. I prefer old books. Anyways, let me know what you think. Until next time, good luck. Take care.